It's been another AI-centric earnings season as investors track the next best move in the AI trade. But what if instead of just investing in AI, traders could also use AI to power other public and private investment strategies? We're here to discuss is Kaiju Worldwide CEO and Global Chair Ryan Pinnell. Ryan, good to have you here. Thanks. Thanks for having me back, and it's nice to be here in person this time. So, so Ryan, let me ask you, maybe just to start, your focus is predictive AI. Correct. Right, as, as opposed to Gen AI, which we spend a lot of time talking about in this show, right, and all kinds of companies spending a lot of time, money, and effort there. Maybe start there, Ryan. Explain to viewers kind of the differences between the two, and then how Kaiju is, is really integrating that tech. Right, so I think, as you say, the, the AI that most people are familiar with is generative AI, where you're taking a, a non-defined, non-standard data set, in most cases the internet, uh, where your ownership of the data to train the models isn't necessarily well-defined, you've got free use versus copyright infringement, and you're trying to answer like any question that somebody could answer and or ask and then create something new out of it. Paint me a picture, write me an essay, make a you know, Sora, make me a movie. And you get problems with hallucination that come with that. I mean, no question, it's a very powerful technology with a bright future. Predictive AI is using either easily purchased or collected at source data. For us, price, time, and quantity, for example. And it's trying to answer a specific question. So in our case, it's trying to identify patterns in price, time, and quantity that immediately precede a price action that we want to take advantage of. And we see this over and over again, and there's a reasonable amount of certainty, and we can use it to, to that end. Mm. And so basically it's all, it's not fundamental analysis at all. It is just based, on, so it's effectively predictive AI based on technical analysis to some extent? If you want to share the, the secret sauce, Ryan? Yeah, you know yeah, yeah, I, I, I knew that was coming. Um, if you think about it, every positive investment decision results in a transaction. Right? It doesn't matter what the asset class is, you know, real estate, derivatives, equities, options. You, know, you do your analysis, whether it's fundamental, technical, there's an investment committee, and at the end of the day, if it's go ahead, you're going to affect a transaction. And we can see the pattern in the transaction. Not always, but for specific transactions, you can, with some degree of certainty, reverse engineer the investment decision that resulted in the transaction. Sure. Example would be, you know, if you're watching rotation versus distribution, they're very different intentions, and so they're very different patterns. Panic looks different. You know, buying quietly because there's, you're, you have some certainty there's going to be a positive earnings and you don't want to disturb price versus buying indiscriminately because you think in five years this stock is going to be more positive, different patterns, different outcomes. If you can identify them, then you can predate on them. Mm. I mean, I'm interested, so, you know, it's interesting, right? You, so you found some tasks where you think, okay, predictive AI in my world investing makes sense. Are there ones where you think, you know what, this tech, this tech is not up to that task? Ones you wouldn't want to see it applied to? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Obviously, anything with a long-term time frame, I don't care if it's human or machine. There's no person, there's no system, there's no predictive AI that's gonna tell you with any certainty where a stock is going to be in six months from now. And anyone who says different is just trying to mm. sell you something. So it's not well suited to that. Global macro, you know, Putin invades Ukraine. What will be the global economic response to that over the next 12 months? There's no system that's going to do that. Mm. Immediate short-term predation on price action and equities derivatives, yes, it's very good at that. But the longer term stuff, no, mm. and I don't see that changing. Mm. So you made a comment near the beginning when you drew the contrast with generative AI, and it sounds like you're a little bit skeptical of that model's, the, the way that it collects information, or its ownership or lack thereof of the data it co corrects. So I'm curious your view on whether you think there should be rules around those kinds of things when it comes to generative AI. Well, I mean, that's a, it's a big question to ask and answer. In terms of the capacity to potentially answer any question that you might ask, no, it, it needs to have this latitude. These the large language models are enormous and obviously incredibly costly to run because you can't determine what someone's going to need, require, or want to review. It can be information collection, it can be creation, so you're going to have to allow it a lot of latitude. With predictive AI, whether it's flying a plane or driving a boat, or trading stock, you needed to do one specific task with a high degree of certainty. And so the hard landscape surrounding those data is important, and thankfully, 
that aligns with that type of technology. But for the larger systems, I don't see how you constrain the data and achieve the same, comp mm. same performance. Ryan, thanks for coming in. It's good My to see pleasure. You. Thank you. Appreciate it.